taken over. We need a young guy with a lot of energy to go for it. I want to tell you that in my 12 years, I've been working mostly in research. I am not in production. My challenge is to create new fruits, not only in Pitaya, but in different types of fruits. I have 112 different types of fruits that I grow in, and I'm trying to create new. That is my challenge. I am not for the money because I am retired. Maybe I have five more years of leave. So I want to keep doing something in this earth. So somebody is going to remember me. They say, hey, this was developed by Ed. <laughs> so that's the only way I can leave my name. I want to say something. Pitaya is a good product to go for it. But the only problem we have that this one is not self-critical. And that's why I'm working a lot in trying to cross breed so many times to try to get the self -fertile. And I want to show you how you can buy one of this night time and you put your light so you don't have to you have to have your hands free to do the pollination and you get a jar glass here like this you tie it up against your chest and then you collect the pollen you want to hold this flower assuming that the flower is open in night time you get your, your scissors and then you go don't be afraid Cut the anthers, only the anthers, where the pollen is. Don't cut the stigma because the stigma is the female part. And then you put it in your glass here. And you cut it from different flowers because you have to do cross-pollinating. Once you cross-pollinate from different flowers, you move it like that, you mix it up, so automatically your pollen is mixed. Then you get pollen from there and you go put it in the female part in the stigma. Just a little bit, that's it. You go flower by flower, takes only in 10 minutes you can do almost 50 flowers. So don't think, oh my God, what a job, I'm going to have a part-time job with no pay. <laughs> don't worry, it's only five or six minutes that you will do, go in the night time and when you light, and do, you collect the point. That is for getting fruit. But if you want to do research, you want to say, hey, this is a good flower, I know it comes from a good fruit, and I'm going to cross with the Vienna, this is self-fertile, you get the pollen from the Vietnamese, cut it and put it in your uh, pink, uh, in, uh, watermelon plant, whatever it is you have that you think is good. You cross pollinate. Once you do that, you put a paper sack at the top or something to cover so no all insects want to bring pollen into that. Once you do that, you know that fruit is being hybridized. That's two different type of pollen. So you don't care about the fruit because the fruit, you don't care. What you care is the seeds. The seeds are already hybridized and those are the ones that are going to give you a brand new type of fruit, brand new type of plant, new type that you can put the name of your wife, any name you want it because you develop that plant. And if you are lucky, you will get a plant that will be sulfur. Then you help a lot the project of the of the Peter Hyde. So I recommend you is to please plant, start your own projects from seeds. Oh, so many people they say, oh, it's going to take five years, four years. Okay, believe me. If you have a uh, do that project, next morning you're not going to get up from your bed and you're going to say, I want to check how is my garden, how is my flower. You go, oh, it's getting better. It's something to do in your life. If you're retired, that's good for you, but if you know are retired, you know after you drive in the freeways, you get so upset with the traffic, you go to your garden and you watch your plants, you go, look at your retired, what a relaxation, that means cleans your mind. So please, my house is open for tomorrow for all of you, whoever want to go. I want to tell you, I am not in production, I am only in research, so you want to see single different types of plants that I have, and I grow it in different ways because I want to show the public different ways that you can grow in your house. You know, the seed, the, the plantation that you see in here, you saw today, is a commercial system. Mostly of you, I don't believe are commercial, they are only a bad yard growers. So you can grow in your house in different ways. Against the wall of your house, if you have cold weather, if it's too hot, you know, you can put shade, I put shade, and if you don't have that problem, you live close to the ocean, 
where the weather is perfect for those particular plants, you don't need shade, you don't need nothing. Just let it grow, like Ramiro says, always at the reach of your hand. Don't try to grow plants where you're going to have to climb in the ladder, break your neck and then try to get one to die. Be practical. You know, we teach everybody that don't grow big trees six feet at the most. All citrus, avocados, the churimoyas, all those trees are lower now to a richer you can. So I think I'm going to, and if you want to measure the sugar content or the of any detail, you want to know how sweet it is, we have the instrument that's been sold, you know, for $30, and you put the juice of the fruit in here, any type of fruit. You put the juice, you close it up, and you measure, and gives you the measure in bricks. You know, normally the detail measure from 12 to 20 bricks. The ones that are 20, they are very high in sugar, and mostly the average of detail are 14 and 15. So, you know, it's very hard to, in, in, in this country to push sweet because everybody says, hey, I'm in a diet, I'm a anemic, I cannot have sugar. So some people say, prefer the Vietnamese type because they want to have sugar. And a lot of people type, they say, oh, hey, lots of fruit, no flavor, no taste. Okay, so you have sweets for you. Too. So we have product for everybody. It's up to you what you like it, what you want to eat, is what you can grow. That's why I recommend in all, all my lectures, before you plant anything, go eat the fruit. If you like the fruit, go ahead, buy the plant. But if you don't be like me, you know, in the beginning, because I was, I was in computers, then I jumped into horticulture, I was so excited, you know, I hear, oh, this fruit, oh my God, I want to have it. Another fruit, oh my God, I want to have it. And you know, I was crazy. I never know the history of those particular fruits. They come from uh, very warm weather, they come from uh, Florida, they never want to be here, but I was crazy, I grew in that, but don't make that mistake, most of us, we have a small place in our house, it's, you know, no, no, we don't have big yard, so grow only what you like to grow, don't waste your time growing things that you don't like to grow, and be practical, read about it, find out what, is, what can grow in your backyard, Check your neighbor what he's growing, and if he's growing avocados, then you can grow pitayas very good because you know they are the same temperature. I think I don't want to keep it longer because everybody's going to get cuttings, and I have to, we have to get up at four o'clock. I am very glad, and thank you all of you who were able to attend today. This was a great festival. I hope so. all of you are happy, and you want to take cuttings, and you taste good fruits and enjoy, and tomorrow, all of you, there are four places available for tomorrow. My wife has in there the address of the people that can, when they come to my house, how to come to my house, she has the papers, you can get it from her. So I will see you tomorrow from 9 to 12, and all the places are open from 9 to 12. I would recommend you, you know, each time you go visit any house, please be careful, don't touch things that you don't supposed to touch. <laughs> if you're allowed, they tell you take fruits, then you can take it, but don't go and grab things, because so many times, especially in my place, all my fruits, they are projects that I'm working, and I've been waiting.